These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Here they are, the Eggheads. What kind of form are we on, Eggs? We're not on the top of the mill. We have a great team in. You will meet in a minute. But first, if you'd like to work on a question from the Eggheads while you watch at home, Kevin, over to you. Yeah, it's a connections question. It's what connects the following four places. There's Bruff in East Yorkshire, Bienville Parish in Louisiana, USA, Glen Rowan in Victoria, Australia, and back in the USA, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Okay. Certain events happened in those places. It's not an exclusive list. Other, other similar things happened elsewhere. But I chose these four because they're probably the most notable things to happen in those places. I'm thinking alien landings. No, that's, that's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin will give us the answer at the end of the show. Meanwhile, challenging the might of our quiz goliaths today are the skeleton staff. Now, this team of physiotherapists work together at the University Hospital of North Durham. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Paul and I'm a lower limb specialist. Hi, I'm Alison. I'm a physiotherapist. Hi, I'm Dave and I'm a back care advisor. Hello, I'm Catherine and I specialise in hand rehabilitation. Hi, I'm Nick and I'm a physiotherapist. So Paul and team, hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. And from the beautiful city of Durham. So you're in the hospital that's quite near the centre of the city, Paul. Yeah, right? it's just up the bank out of, out of the city, yes, about, about a mile. Yeah. And, and you all do things that involve muscles and skeletons, essentially, I mean, getting people better through physio and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 it's all rehabilitation. So, you know, gym-based, um, hospital-based, that kind of thing, yeah. It's all outpatients, we're all working outpatients. Right. Well, you'll have a queue after the show, <laughs> won't they? Yeah. Yes. We've all got our... Ah. Aches and pains. Aches and pains here, yeah. yeah. So, do you quiz together, Paul? That's the key question. Um, we do our, our quiz regularly at a, at a pub in Durham, but um, I don't quiz with the team. Um, but I've got, I've got a quiz book um, as a Secret Santa present a, a couple of years yeah, ago, right. so... I take it into work and we I, I quiz them basically. That's perfect. There are many yeah. teams have done that and won here. Well, we say good luck, challengers. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs. But if the eggheads win, the prize money rolls over to the next show. And skeleton staff, the eggheads have been winning a lot recently. They've won the last dozen games. In a way, I know it's a bit terrifying, but it's also good because it means the jackpot for you is thirteen thousand, if you can take them down. So you've come on a good day. Yeah. Would you like to try? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. The first head-to-head -head battle is on politics. So one of you, please, against either Dave, Steve, Barry, Kevin, or Judith. Catherine, you're up. Are you <laughs> doing politics? Look yeah, like Catherine, it. Yeah. Okay, Jill. Do you want to take on? Yeah. Go for Steve. Steve, right. there you go. Okay. It's Catherine from Skeleton Staff taking on Steve from the Eggheads. <laughs> please, to ensure there's no conferring, take your positions in our famous question room. Okay, Catherine, your area of speciality is hand rehabilitation. It is, yes. Yep. So we see all sorts of trauma and elective surgery. Because sometimes what people have injured their hand or whatever. Yeah, DIY is on a weekend, circular saw injuries, yeah, industrial accidents, although there's less of them now with health and safety around. So yes, we get a wide range of injuries. It's hammers or saws mainly? Circular saws is the favourite. It starts to happen in about March time and then the frequency goes up among the summer months um, and then it starts to calm down again once people put all their power tools away. Okay, politics, Catherine, your choice. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, please. Here we go. Who immediately preceded Gordon Brown as the UK's Chancellor of the Exchequer? Kenneth Clark. George Osborne or Norman Lamont? I think that would be George Osborne. No, he came after under the Cameron government. So this was, we're going back here to the 90s and it was John Major's Prime Minister and Kenneth Clark is the answer. Okay, Steve, your question. What name is given to a vote cast by any one of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council that effectively blocks a majority decision? Is the word sanction, veto, or boycott? I, th I just thought it was the same for any sort of blocking vote, to be honest. I'd say veto, Jeremy. Veto is right. Back to you, Catherine. The political advisor Alistair Campbell was born in which part of the UK? Cardiff, Glasgow, or Yorkshire? Um, I think he was from Yorkshire. 
That's a very good answer. Well done. Yorkshire is correct. Well done. Steve, who succeeded Calvin Coolidge and preceded Franklin D. Roosevelt as president of the USA? Harry S. Truman, Herbert Hoover, or Warren G. Hardy? I think that's Herbert Hoover, Jeremy. Herbert Hoover is correct. All right, back to you, Catherine. Your question. Immediately prior to being appointed head of the National Coal Board in 1983, Ian McGregor served as chairman of which nationalised corporation? British Steel, British Rail or British Gas? Um, I would say British Steel. You're quizzing well, British Steel is correct. I really wish you hadn't got the first one wrong because it gives Steve a chance to take his place in the final now. The Scotsman, Robert Rintoul, was the founder and first editor of which political publication? New Statesman, Spectator, or Private Eye? I don't know the name. Yeah, I think... Spectator's a bit older. Um, and I, it's not a name I associate with a Spectator. Private Eye, I thought was somebody else. I really don't know. I thought I'd know more about this, but I'm going to have to say New Statesman, Jeremy. New Statesman is your answer. You you and your periodicals and your newspapers are always a terrible, terrible subject. It's it's not right. It's the spectator. Right. So we go to sudden death. Catherine, you're still in it. <laughs> Gets a bit harder now. I don't give you different options, okay? Okay. Here's your question. The United States Supreme Court building is in which city? New York? No, it's Washington, D.C. Steve, for the round. In a response to tensions over Ukraine, which country imposed a ban on food imports from the EU and the U.S. in August 2014? I would have to say Russia. Russia is the right answer, Steve. You've done it. You're in the final round. Sorry, Catherine. Beaten by our egghead. Please come back to us, both of you, and we'll see what happens next. So periodicals and magazines and newspapers, sometimes we seem to go into a little skid on them, in case you're interested. The New Statesman, 1913. Yeah. The Spectator, 1828. Although, Kevin, I think there have been different spectators. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there was a Spectator back in the early 18th century, um, which was set up by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele. Yeah. Private Eye, anyone? 61. 61. As it stands, skeleton staff have lost a brain from the final round. The air kids are still all there. And we play on with film and TV. Who would like this challenge us? Who was that one? Who was that? Yeah. Show, was it? No, 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 we no, 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 Dave, I gather you're a Springsteen fan. Yeah, yeah, big Springsteen fan. Seen, only seen about five or six times, but uh, yeah. He's played up in Newcastle, hasn't he? Yeah, I saw him in Newcastle first time. I saw him at St James's Park. Seen him in Glasgow a couple of times as well. Okay, so we're on film and TV. Dave, and would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. What is the profession of Tokyo Myers, the winner of the 2017 series of Britain's Got Talent? Magician, pianist, or acrobat? It's a program I've never watched. I will turn it off when it comes on. I think he was a pianist. Pianist is right. Well done, you. Egghead Dave, the 2013 film Alan Partridge Alpha Papa received its world premiere in which UK city? Yeah. Norwich, Leicester, or Manchester? Right, I'm going to go out on a whim here. I wasn't. Wouldn't know straight away, but I'm ruling out Leicester and Manchester because it's radio Norwich. We've got to go Norwich, haven't we? And Norwich is right. And it is actually a very good film. Yeah. It's really funny. OK, <sighs> Challenger Dave. Which actress received her seventh Oscar nomination for her performance in the film Steve Jobs? Kate Winslet, Helen Mirren or Judi Dench? Well, I don't think it was Judi Dench. And I'm sure Kate Winslet played... Obviously, I would say Kate Winslet. Good quizzing, you're right. Have you seen the film? I have, yes. Okay, Dave, who has presented TV shows Road Traders, Watchdog, and Fake Britain? 
Evan Davis, Adrian Charles, or Matt Allwright? Don't think it's Evan Davis or Adrian Charles. I think it's Matt Allwright, please. Well done, Dave. It is Matt Allwright. Back to our challenger. Today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth is a quotation from which baseball film? The Natural, The Pride of the Yankees, or Field of Dreams? I don't know this one at all. Field of Dreams was the Kevin Costner film, wasn't it, where he built the baseball park? The Natural, I don't know at all. Um, I would say The Pride of the Yankees, and it's a pure guess going down the middle. The Pride of the Yankees is the right answer. Well done, Dave. Three out of three. Leaves tremendous knowledge, Dave, hanging on here. Dave, get this wrong, you're out. Yeah. The BBC comedy series White Gold, featuring the in-betweeners actors Joe Thomas and James Buckley, is set in which decade? 1960s, 70s or 80s? Hmm. White Gold. Let me see if I can get a handle on it. No, I'm not getting anything. I'm going to go with the 1980s. 80s is right. <laughs> yeah, White Gold is, I, I mean, I've watched it actually, I quite, I quite enjoyed it. It's very funny, it's very stylized. It's really, it takes you back in a sort of almost cartoony way. White Gold, they are double glazing cells. Men, oh, right. And it's that plastic, UPVC or whatever. Okay. Okay, so after three questions each, the scores are level. I thought you had him there, yeah. Challenger. So we go to sudden death now, Dave, and just to make it that bit harder, I don't give you alternatives. So here is your first Question. Which film studio purchased the animation company Pixar in 2006 for $7.4 billion? Um, well, I think they became Disney Pixar, so I would say Disney. Disney is correct. Dave, from 2011 to 2014, who played the role of the detective Richard Poole in the TV drama Death in Paradise? If it's 2011 to 2014, which I believe is the first one, I have to go Ben Miller. Ben Miller's right. Back to you, Dave. Which British comedy actor provides the voice of King Julian, the ring-tailed lemur, in the animated film Madagascar and its two sequels? Madagascar, British comedy actor. I'm not getting anything at all here. British comedy actor. I'll try. I'm not 100% not certain I wouldn't know, so I'll, I'm going for Steve Coogan, but I'm not sure. No, it's Sasha Baron Cohen, ah, yeah. the guy behind Ali G. So, Dave, for the round, which Italian composer won a Golden Globe and Oscar for the score of the 2015 film The Hateful Eight? Ennio Morricone. At the age of 87, it was Ennio Morricone. Well done, tremendous knowledge, Dave. Oh, challenger, Dave, you were so good. But he just, he pipped you at the post there, yeah. and you'd be knocked out as well. Return to us, please, and we'll play round three. The skeleton staff are playing well, but they have lost two brains from the final round. The eggheads are playing well, and they haven't lost any. So let's see where we go from here. It's geography challenges. Who wants this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alison, our physiotherapist. Barry's well troubled, isn't he? Barry has been to every answer. Yes. <laughs> but that that shouldn't put you off because he gets questions wrong here. I'm not I'm not suggesting Barry? you don't. Yeah. Go for Barry. Yeah. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Go for Barry. Barry. Yeah. All right. He would have been furious if I put you off choosing him. Alison from Skeleton Staff versus Barry from the Eggheads on Geography. Please take your positions. So Alison, I gather you are quite well travelled. Yes, I am. You were in Dawson City, Yukon. And you had something called a sour toe cocktail. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Tell us about that. So um, a miner had his toe amputated many years back um, and he had it pickled in a jar. His toe, yeah. And um, 50 years later, someone found it and it ended up at a downtown hotel um, in Dawson City. And then they decided it would be a great idea to put it into a cocktail. So people go and have a cocktail and have a sour toe cocktail. So that you drop the toe into the cocktail. Yeah, and it's a real mummified toe. They then take the toe out and they put it back in the pickle, do they? Yes. Okay. The idea is that you either drink it fast or drink it slow, but your lips have to touch the toe. Alison, so you, you were travelling in Canada then, you've been to Rwanda? Yeah, I've been to many parts of South America, so Peru, Bolivia, um, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, um, also New Zealand. Oh good, all right, you're well prepared for the geography round, so tell Thank us whether you. you would like to go first or second against Barry. I'll go first, please. 
not the most exotic question to start with. Which of these islands lies in the Thames estuary? Canvey Island, Sark or Anglesey? That would be Canvey Island. It is indeed. Well done. Canvey Island's right. Barry, Mauritania is a country located in which part of Africa? Northwest, northeast or southeast? Mauritania is in the northwest of Africa. Northwest is right. Well done. Over to you, Alison. Which Irish county is bordered to its east by Cork and Limerick? Wicklow, Galway or Kerry? Um, I'm going to say Wicklow. Barry, do you know? Uh, Wicklow's down that way, certainly not Galway. Uh, I'm just wondering if Kerry also is. Is it bordered to the east? Yeah, I think it is Wicklow. No, it's Kerry. Ooh. Sorry, Alison. Okay, Barry. The Porte des Allemandes, or Gate of the Germans, is a medieval feature of which French city returned to France after World War I? Nice, Metz, or Bordeaux? Uh, nice has been France for quite some time. I think that was, might have originally been owned by the Italians, and Bordeaux has certainly always been France. I think it, it's got to be Metz. Yes, it's Metz. Alison, you need this to stay in. What is the approximate distance as the crow flies from Vancouver to Quebec City? 2,360 miles, 3,360 miles, or 4,360 miles? It's a long way. I think 2,360 is not enough. Canada is the second largest country in the world. Um, I'm going to go for 4,360 miles. Barry? I'd have gone for 3,360. I think Canada's a big, but I think that it can't be that far from Vancouver to Quebec. Barry, we're talking about one side to the other, are we? Quebec isn't on the East Coast. I think it's about 1,000 miles in down the St. Lawrence River, so I would have gone for 3,360 miles. As a matter of fact, you'd both be wrong, because it is the shortest of those distances, oh. 2,360 miles. So, Barry, well done. You've won the round, Alison. You've been beaten by our egghead. So come back to us, Alison and Barry, and we'll play one more round before the final. Okay, the skeleton staff have lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any. And the last subject before the final is sport. Who would like sport? Nick. As for me, yes. <laughs> Nick, so. our physiotherapist who plays rugby and cricket. That's good. And you can take on either Kevin or Judith. So the two on this side. I think we've already discussed this. I think we'll, uh, I'll take Judith on. Judith on sport. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it has been a well. while. It's Nick from Skeleton Staff versus Judith from the Eggheads. And please, for the last time, go to our question room. Nick, you are a, a mad keen rugby and cricket player, I know. Yeah, that's right. I've kind of focused on those two a couple more over the last few years, but I've, I've done kind of just about everything previously, really, from swimming, tennis, squash, um, all sorts, really. OK, good luck here against our Judith. And would you like to go first or second, Nick? I think I'll break the trend. I think I'll go second, please. OK, Judith, great to see you back playing sport. Which footballer, Judith, scored the most goals in the 2016-17 Premier League season? Harry Kane, Diego Costa or Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Oh, dear me. I think I'm going to say Harry Kane. Oh, wow. You got it right. Do you know who you plays for? Extra questions are not allowed. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, Spurs, yeah. Yeah. OK, so you got the first question right. Here we go. Nick, your question. Since 1989, how many test matches are typically played on a modern-day British and Irish Lions rugby union tour? Nick, is it one, two or three? Well, they tend to move around different um, different major cities and stadiums in the, the area that they're playing, whether that be New Zealand, Australia or South Africa. It's got to be three. Three is right. Judith, which golfer won the 2017 Men's US Open? Paul Casey, Dustin Johnson or Brooks Koepka? Dustin Johnson was expected to win, wasn't he? And he didn't. And Paul Casey started off uh, leading so I think it was Brooks Kopka. Hey kids, is she right? Yes. Yes, you're right, Judith. Really good. Brooks Kopka. Nick, your question. Kane Williamson usually performs which role for the New Zealand cricket team? Wicketkeeper, 
batsman or fast bowler? Uh, I think he's actually the captain at the moment and he's, uh, he's a batsman. You really know your stuff, don't you? Batsman is right. Well done. I'm feeling we're up against a very good player here, Judith. I do too. Here's your third question. William War made headlines in 2017 at which sporting event? Grand National? London Marathon or University Boat Race? How, how do you spell the war? War is W-A-R-R. -R. Boat Race is an eight, so why would he have made his name that? Grand National, um, who won the Grand National? One for Arthur or something it was called. Oh dear. I think I'm going to say the Grand National and hope the best. On the basis that it might have been a horse? No, on the basis it might have been his jockey. Right. Judith, the answer is University Boat Race. What did he do? He's one of three people to have rode for both teams. So he is a he's a proper quiz answer, old William War. It's Nick's question. And we know that if he gets this right, Judith, the unthinkable occurs. Which of these sporting prizes was not presented in 2005 after a labour dispute led to the whole season being cancelled? Nick, was it Commissioner's Trophy, Vince Lombardi Trophy or Stanley Cup? I've, I've managed to like the first two questions. This one's a bit of a stumping me a little bit. I, I don't think I'm going to say Stanley Cup. Um, i would probably go Vince Lombardi Trophy. Let's just see. Dave on this side, do you know? I thought it was ice hockey and I thought it was the Stanley Cup. Yeah, good quizzer here. Ice hockey, it's the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Stanley Cup is the answer. So after three questions each, the scores are level. And we go to sudden death to make it that bit harder. The questions are not multiple choice. Judith, you start. With 15 world titles at 500cc and 350cc, which Italian motorcycle rider is widely considered to be the most successful of all time? I said I really have absolutely no idea. I can't think. Just, just give us any name. Um, Paolo Zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> Giacomo Agostini. Oh, thank you. Not Paolo Obergini or anything like that. <laughs> oh dear. In horse racing, Nick, which jockey won the Epsom Derby in 2007 on Authorised and in 2015 on Golden Horn? Horse racing's not, not again, really my subject. Um, nor are jockeys, really. Um, I'm going to say Frankie de Tori. Well done, you've got it right. You're in the final round, Nick. Sorry, Judith. <laughs> Nick, you've taken on an egghead and emerged triumphant. Great news for the challengers here, because you'll be in the final round. So come back, Nick and Judith, and we'll play the final for £13,000. So this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads will not be allowed to take part in this round. So Alison, Dave and Catherine from Skeleton Staff and our own Judith from the Eggheads, would you please now leave the studio. Paul and Nick, you're playing to win Skeleton Stuff, £13,000. Good jackpot today. Dave, Steve, Barry, Kevin, you're playing to defend the money and protect the Egghead's precious reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. They're all general knowledge and you can confer, gentlemen. So, Skeleton Stuff, the question is, can your two brains defeat these four? Paul and Nick, do you want to go first or second? Uh, I think since Nick went second, he's the only one that's through. I think we'll, we'll go for the second, please. Here we go. With general knowledge, question number one to the eggheads. George V was king of the United Kingdom during which of these wars? Crimean War, World War One, or World War Two? World War One. Yeah. George V, just to double check. George V. Yeah, no, it's World War One. World War One is correct. Challenges. For what does the second A stand in the American government acronym NASA? Is it administration, association, or agency? Administration. Yeah. Space agency. National. Administration. Yeah, it is administration. You got it right. It's administration. What's the full thing, Eggs? National Aeronautics and Space Administration. 
Okay, hey kids. Beren and Luthien, first published in June 2017, is a book by which writer? H.G. Wells, C.S. Lewis, or J.R.R. Tolkien? Tolkien. It's Tolkien, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Okay. It's um, a previously unpublished work, I think, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh, so it's only recently come out? Yeah, we've just come to that. You're right, J.R.R. Tolkien, it is. Two to you. <sighs> to catch up, challenges your question. Lee Ann Pinnock found fame as a member of which girl group? Sugar Babes, Little Mix, or The Saturdays? Saturdays? Oh, I've not got a clue. <laughs> it's not definitely not Little Mix. Um... It's Sorry. definitely not a little mix of them around now, and right. I don't like to admit that I know most of the uh, names, yeah. but... Um, totally, yeah. I have no idea. Just go with Sugar Babes, I think. Sugar Babes? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, try Sugar Babes with no degree of certainty. Okay, eggheads? Hey, little mix. Little mix is the answer. Yeah. So, one out of two, and if the eggheads get this right, the contest is over. Eggs, in mythology, who is the Greek equivalent of the Roman god Vulcan? Who is it? Cronos, Hephaestus, or Nemesis? Hephaestus. Hephaestus, yes. Hephaestus, Hephaestus. Yeah. Yeah, the, the god of metalworking and that kind of thing. It's uh, Hephaestus. Your answer is Hephaestus. Cronos is time, I'm guessing. Yes. yes. Nemesis is judgment. Yes. yes. Vulcan's equivalent is have feast us. We say congratulations, eggheads. You have won. That was over far too soon. <laughs> the trouble of going of going second. Sometimes you give them the initiative, but uh, well, commiserations. Skeleton staff. Little mix. Ah, the eggheads have done what comes naturally to them, and the winning streak continues over here. They are in very good form. They're hard to beat at the moment. They've had a few games recently where all five of them have been at the desk in the final round. So it means the challengers are not going home with the £13,000. We will roll that money over to our next show. Maybe it will also be dramatic. Kevin, you had a question at the beginning of the show. Yeah, I asked what connected the four places, Bruff in Yorkshire, Bienville Parish in Louisiana in the USA, Glen Rowan in Victoria, and Fort Sumner in New Mexico. As I said at the start, it's not an exhaustive list. There are other things that have happened in other places, but this is probably the well, these are probably the most notable things to have happened in these places. And what connects them is that they're all the site of the capture or demise of famous outlaws. So that uh, Bruff in Yorkshire was where Dick Turpin was finally captured. Bienville Parish in Louisiana is where Bonnie and Clyde were ambushed and met their end. Glen Rowan in Victoria is where Ned Kelly was made his last stand and was wounded and captured. And Fort Sumner in New Mexico was where Billy the Kid met his fate. Fantastic. Did you get it at home? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. There'll be £14,000 as a jackpot. Until we quiz again, goodbye.